8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. The Russian attack on Finland, or as the Russians call it, their counterattack against Finnish aggression, has, according to United Press reports, succeeded in 18 hours in attaining its primary objective, the resignation of the Finnish government. At least that is what the Russians have said is their objective, the replacement of the Kayander ministry by one which would be more friendly to Russia and would presumably be willing to give up the fortified frontier in Karelia and let the Russians have their naval base at Hanga, which the Kayander ministry has refused. In the first of the five air raids on Helsinki today, Russian planes dropped leaflets saying they had no wish to harm the Finnish people and if they only got rid of Kayander, Foreign Minister Erko and General Monerheim, everything would be all right. But later air raiders dropped bombs, not leaflets. Several fires were started in Helsinki. Forty people were killed and 120 wounded there, according to a Finnish broadcast picked up in London tonight. And Viborg, Hunga, and other cities were also bombed. Tonight, a report spread through the Finnish capital that unless Finland made a complete surrender by 3 o'clock in the morning, that is 8 p.m. New York time, Helsinki and the other cities would be wiped off the map by air raids, leaving not even a trace. According to the newspaper of Foreign Minister Erko, these reports should not be taken seriously. But it is hard to see any other reason for the reported resignation of the Kayander government, which is said to have followed shortly after. The Finns claim to have held the Russians in the land fighting on the Karelian border. But the first day of the war evidently showed them that their 150 airplanes were helpless against the Russian Air Force, which outnumbers them 20 or 30 to 1. The new ministry has not yet been formed, and there's a good deal of speculation as to who will head it. The name most commonly mentioned is that of Finance Minister Tanner, the socialist leader who gave shelter to Stalin when he was in exile in the early days of the Russian Revolution. Tanner, however, was one of the negotiators who spent several weeks in Moscow this fall, vainly trying to get the Russians to reduce their demands. Apparently, Stalin's gratitude had no particular effect at that time. A Moscow dispatch tonight says that political observers there think that with the Kayander government out of the way, the Russians will consent to an armistice and resumption of negotiations, but there's nothing official yet. In the military operations of the day, the Russians occupied without opposition the four small islands in the Gulf of Finland, which the Finns had been willing to give up to them anyway, and are said also to have seized the port of Petsamo on the Arctic Ocean. On the land frontier near Leningrad, they claim to have advanced nine or ten miles. The Finns say the Russians were halted, but don't say where. Another attack east of Lake Ladoga in a region poorly provided with roads was only an attempt at a diversion. Public sentiment almost all over the world seems to regard the Russian attack on Finland as the worst of all the recent attacks by great powers on small states. Since until last Sunday evening, the Russians had not accused the Finns of anything except having something Russia wanted and their subsequent stories of frontier incidents are not taken very seriously outside of Russia. The Vatican newspaper, the Osservatorio Romano, speaks of a worldwide wave of indignation, and that is supported by the stories from almost all countries except Germany. German newspapers, up to the time our last dispatches were received a little more than an hour ago, had printed nothing at all about the fighting in Finland. On the ground, as one German authority put it, that, quote, we have no confirmation of the news and the German press never publishes anything that is not fully confirmed, end quote. As W.L. White reported from Berlin on this network earlier in the evening, the German newspapers are printing a great deal about a worldwide wave of indignation, but that is about the British blockade. One sinking reported in the mine war today, a 2,700-ton British collier. The French say one of their torpedo boats sank a German submarine. There were isolated air actions over the east coast of England, and a damaged British submarine came into a port in the Norwegian island of Fosteroy. It was said, however, that the submarine had been damaged by a storm, and the Admiralty denied that it had been injured by German airplanes. The British announced the laying of a new minefield, covering some 300 square miles of ocean, midway between the mouth of the Thames and the Dutch coast. In announcing this, as soon as military considerations permit, they respond to the restrictions of the Hague Convention of 1907. The Germans have never announced the location of their mines. Premier Daladier of France won a vote of confidence in the Chamber of Deputies today by a vote of 309 to 188. And a good many people in the conversation I have heard are wondering whether Sweden, Norway, or Romania will be the next nation to commit an aggression against Russia. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.